What's going on guys? Welcome to Elevate. Uh, it's a brand new golf training facility we opened uh, November 1st this past year. Uh, we've got seven TrackMan simulators, got an undulated green in the back for chipping and putting, got a weight room, got an awesome players lounge in here. Uh, we've got an awesome team of golf uh, staff here, PTs and golf pros. Uh, they come in, assess your game, assess your physical capabilities, and then put together an individualized uh, training program for you guys uh, here that is meant to tackle your golf goals. So we're gonna go through a workout training day today. Uh, I've got Caleb Willems here uh, with us today. He's gonna run me through a golf training workout. And we're gonna show you what it looks like to be a day in the life of a training member here at Elevate. If you look at it, it looks like a simple movement, right? But when you put your body in that position, you're like, I haven't felt this before. Yeah. Like if you do it correctly, it's a workout. No doubt. So, awesome. You ready to go hit some balls? Yes. Cool. Set up in your normal impact position. Make sure that we're still opening back, right? Get that club behind you, okay. right? Still rotating back. It's a little heavy. Like yeah. this, right? If you hit behind it, chunky, you're catching a little bit later in the swing, so the attacking won't be as down. Got it. Good. Back, back, but like, still keeping that weight on the front side, and then firing. All right. In a half swing, it's hard to, to get the timing down of getting that weight shifted forward, right? So just kind of cheat it there in this drill. Yeah. 120, 125 yard carry, right? Yeah, right, and that's like your normal eight iron yardage, right? My heel, is it okay if my heel comes in? Yeah, just slightly, yeah. Yeah, we got the face closed that time. <laughs> it just shows the importance of quality about as far as you do with a full swing. Well, do you think, so does it have anything to do with like how high it goes? Yeah, it's so like, the better you we can press a golf ball. Speed. Yeah. We were talking about yesterday, the higher it goes. Yeah. The higher it goes, I'm going to lose some distance too, but I'm going to also it's a fine line. have better stopping yeah. capabilities. Correct. So. The better you can compress the golf ball, the more spin you'll create, right? That's going to launch it higher, which increases the stopping power. But with irons, that's great. Like, you want to create that spin to launch it further. If a ball has no spin, it'll go up, it'll just knuckle down, right? Like a knuckleball just kind of drops out of the sky, right? So that spin helps keep it up there and travel further. Why we start with an A iron? Why did I come in and start a high So Any drill you'll notice that we have you doing is with an A iron because it's a mid iron. Right, so it's going to translate to the whole back. All right, I don't want you practicing a foot swing drill, a, a, a feel with a four iron, right? Because you got to swing that a little bit faster, it's harder to feel. Um, so you'll notice it, the first thing you do when you came in here was a lot of chipping gear, right? It's like you got to walk, lead line. Right? So we're going to get the feels down that slow at swing speeds. But then once we're doing like full swing drills like this, it's with an eight iron or a seven iron because they translate to the whole back. Uh, whatever you can do with an eight iron, you can do with a pitch match, or you have to fight. So like first first week or two of training base for an LA member, walk me through what what those initial ones look like. Like you just did your assessment. Yep, first couple of weeks was it. Yeah, so it all depends on the assessment. Um, we kind of have the analogy, it's like a GPS, right? It's can't get to where you're going if you don't know where to start, right? So we start you with an assessment, right? And everybody starts in a unique spot. Right, that's what's so cool about this and it's very individualized um in the fact that like if i'm a scratch golfer and you're a 20 handicap we're not going to start with the same drills mm -hmm. right it, it's all going to be based off where you're at when you take that assessment um uh, find the deficiencies that whether it's in the golf swing whether that's in the gym um because it all relates and then we program pretty based off that so if you're a 20 30 handicapper and you're super over the top with your swing well, we're going to get you started in a lot of chipping drills and a lot of like half swing heels. If you're a more advanced golfer, we're going to get you in the drills like this, 
where it's like you have a pretty solid foundation. It's just some minor tweaks, and then build off that with the timer reps. All right, what's next? Uh, let's go some fork it. Yeah. So putting wise, putting green, what's, what's been the issue? Has it been short putts, long putts, speed? Yeah. Well, I think that the two biggest things, my misses are usually speed control, like mm -hmm. front to back. Or if I miss left to right, I'm usually open face pushing it. Okay. So yeah. those are probably my two. Okay, cool. Well, today let's, let's get you going in a, a lag putting drill, a speed control drill. Okay. Um, so this is a, a variation of our three, six, nine drill, right? We got three feet, six feet, nine feet, and then I just extended it out for you. Okay. okay. Um, so we're going to start with the closest one. Like you yeah. said, sometimes you have an open face push mm -hmm. that'll kind of measure this. But then as we work our way back, what we're worried about is, is lagging it closer to the hole, right? I mean, we don't expect you to make every nine footer or 12 footer, but we expect a two putt every single time, right? right. We want to yeah. eliminate those three putts. Yep. So you're going to start here. We should make this first one every single time, right? It's just a confidence booster, right? I mean, that's the biggest part of putting is confidence. Yeah. Um, and then work our way back. And as we get further back, it's let's lag it close to the hole. As I get further back and I'm trying to put more like effort into my putter stroke, mm -hmm. You get face. rotational. Yeah, I get rotational yeah. and the face control like just goes away. Yeah, yeah. So the way to get that feel, right? Like it's the further you get back, that makes sense. So it's, it works on, if we work on it with the shorter putts, okay? It's, it's maintaining that face control through impact, okay. right? And especially when we get in that longer putt. So there you go. You try to keep that face on target as long as possible, right? Because the further back you get, like you said, you're going to start pulling them. And then when we miss low side, so this one has a little bit of break to the left, right? You miss low side, the ball just takes off. Right. Yep. Yeah. And it's okay to feel like when you come through, right? So almost feel like instead of here, because it's hard to like stay low the whole time, right? You feel like you're almost like pressing, right? It's like as you come through, it's okay for that face to like come up, right? but it's after, all right. That was better. Nails. Nails. <laughs> Flattish. Stay up. All right, so, I mean, that's fine. We missed it, but it's a foot and a half coming back, right? Yeah. Which will make that, yeah. right? So that's the purpose of these longer ones. Yeah, very good speed. Tap that in and we move on to the next hole, right? Cool. Yeah. Good work. So this chipping drill that I'm gonna have you do, uh, it's our target landing spot drill. Um, Oftentimes when people are chipping, they don't really focus on where they want to land it. Um, they're like, okay, I have to play this shot, a bump and run or a stock chip. Um, and then they look at the hole and then they guess where to land it, right? Yeah. So this drill forces you to focus on where you want to land it. And it's almost an aim small, miss small type um, thought process, right? Like I know I need to hit a stock chip to this spot right here where the towel is, right? And on this green, I don't care what the result is, whatever it is, but like when you're out playing golf, it's like, okay, I need to land it here. It's going to break this way, whatever the factors may be. Um, so first thing is decide what type of chip you have to hit, right? So keep it as low as you can for as long as you can. Um, but once you decide what shot you want to hit, then it's just pick the landing spot and focus on that, right? So whether that's reading break, slope, whatever it is, almost like a putt. Um, and then we focus on that landing spot, not so much the end goal, the target, right? Um, and then you just the two biggest things just even with like the putt is going to be the read and then the execution of it right so this is just kind of eliminating the read the yeah shot doesn't matter it's just working on the the, the landing spot correct okay. it's like with putting if there's a putt with a lot of break right it, you're like okay i know it's a 20 foot putt and i know it breaks this much here's my start line and then when you're standing over the putt you're like okay now i'm focused on my start line mm -hmm. right get it started on that line with good speed i'll be all right, right. okay so same thing with chipping it's Landed here with good contact, it's okay. gonna do the result I want it to. Cool. All right. So stock chip landed on that sucker. Stock chip, just landing it right on that towel. Oh, a little deep. There it is. Nice. 
Real good. Wow. How many balls, like a week, do you think a high school or like aspiring golfer should chip it up? A, a lot. <laughs> At least like 500. Like if you come in here and you get 100 chips a day, like with various type chips, yeah. I mean, it doesn't take long to hit 100 chips, yeah. right? And it's not taxing on the body or anything like that. But the more reps you can get in, say you're here five days a week, if you can get 100 chips a day, you're going to have that feel down. You're going to get out on the course and you're going to be confident when it comes to chipping. Yeah. Uh, just because you know I've hit all these types of shots. I've hit the bumper run. I've hit the stock. I've hit the high spinning one that I'm in a, in a bad position. And I have to hit it. Um, and you don't have confidence if you don't go through the repetition, right? Familiarity, repetition, that breeds confidence, right? And confidence is the number one key for execution. All right, we're gonna practice technique outside of the bunker first. Okay. okay. Um, so with a bunker shot, we're gonna be sitting in our heels more, okay. right? Wide stance and open stance. So like, if my target is you, I'm gonna drop my lead foot. That way I, I have room to get the shaft left and the handle left, okay? Um, another thing is no forward press. So <laughs> kind of what we've been working on today, we don't want to do that, okay? Um, so hands want to be neutral. Shaft is almost pointing right at our belly button, right? And not forward. And are you familiar with bounce? Bounce of a golf club, right? We want to use that bounce. We don't want that leading edge to dig in. So to prevent that, when we take it back, hands are low, okay? Open face. When I take it back and come through, I'm maintaining that that shaft doesn't go forward, use that bounce, almost skipping it, but then I'm keeping those grooves up, right? right. Uh, Tony Finau refers to it as like rocking the baby, right? I'm here and keeping the grooves up, right? So if I'm here holding the baby, right? Okay. If I'm, if I flip, right? I go like this, well, the baby's falling on my hands, right? My arms. Okay. So I'm here and I'm just skipping it across and keeping those grooves up. Forward. There you go. And your heels. Yeah. yeah. And then just splash it. Yeah, much better. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so, uh, I've never heard that before with the amount of sand. Yeah. And differentiating, uh, you know, between wet sand and dry sand. I mean, yep. Like, There's a lot of factors and everything that go into it. Yeah, yeah, all the details. For right. Sure. Talk to me a little bit about golf performance performance for a golfer, why would they spend their time in the weight room? Yeah, I mean, it's important to be in the weight room because, I mean, it's, <laughs> people make the jokes like golfers aren't athletes, but it's quite the opposite, right? It's, Dr. Ty will take you through an assessment and he's gonna measure strength outputs and, and flexibility and mobility and everything like that. And, Anything we're trying to accomplish in the bay, like if you want to hit it further, you have to be stronger. Off season or the in season or yeah. the end of the or... Yeah, so you'll notice today, like we had you do some mobility stuff first, right? It's let's get loose, let's activate those muscles, let's warm them up, and then let's go do everything golf related. And then let's get back in here and let's finish out with the strength stuff, right? Like this is the time you want to drain your body, right? Um, if it's off season, whatever, off season's perfect, right? Yeah. Build that strength in the off season, um, you're going to be a little bit sore, right? So. Let's not do it in season when you have a match the next day. Um, but let's, we can maintain sure. in season, but then off season is where we load up the weights and. Eight of them. Side bend, pushing through, very good. All right guys, thanks for checking out this video. Day in the life of kind of an Elevate member here. I'll walk through that with Caleb. Uh, from a 30,000 foot view, it's the exact same way. You know, our order of operations for Premier Pitching is, you know, from the warm up stuff, soft tissue stuff, um, to mobility and correctives, to uh, skill specific stuff, to strength and conditioning performance based stuff. So um, when you get up that high, you know, the high level training for any type of sport, it's all the same. Everybody kind of walks through their day just like that. That's really probably the biggest takeaway for this. Uh, but if you guys like content like this, I'm gonna try to keep jumping around with different people that I know that either 
own facilities or run facilities and show them what their training looks like to show some correlations, but also show some differences. So thanks for checking out this video. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next time.